Hey guys, welcome back. We have some more, I, I know it's not the most exciting news of all time, but if you're collecting, if you're buying, selling, whatever you're doing, this is some pretty important stuff. At least you want, you want to, you want to get the gist of it. I want to share kind of both, both sides of it, the sketchiness that's going on that uh, a lot of people might not necessarily mention. And uh, I guess like the the whole golden thing, no one really is is talking about the golden part of it. They're just more concerned about what's going on here. Do I, am I going to save so much shipping on the old uh, on on these listings? The market is doomed. Oh my god. Um, not so much. There, I think, I think that the overall a, a thing that's going to go on here is the fact that eBay, the eBay vault. I don't know if it was a direct like response to PWCC kind of creating their own vault kind of system. I guess it was to replace that, but potentially. I don't have inside information on any of that stuff, so we're just speculating today and just sharing my opinion on it. Uh, and uh, it's it's not a not a big surprise. It seems like eBay and PSA and collectors in general is kind of they seem they be uh, they're pretty close. They're pretty close, and we'll see if there's any sort of uh, I guess uh, government action that's taken uh, if if things get a little too monopolized. And it seems like that might be the way. We have eBay who seems to be gobbling up everything in existence that has to do with collecting, uh, and uh, I mean with PSA at this point in time with collectors with eBay, it seems like it seems like competition is not exactly possible when when you start cornering in everything like this. It is it, the entry, the, the barrier to entry at this point to this stuff. Is, it's looking looking pretty wild. So I think more than anything, this probably it, it it impacts the the people that are consigning, the consigners that are selling through eBay that are using eBay's services. I think they're gonna have the most change going on here, uh, in terms of uh, people that are flip dipping. I guess you can flip dip a little bit faster. I don't think you're gonna be really necessarily saving any money. If your if if your submission is of any size, the shipping cost, the return shipping cost to you is should be pretty much negligible per card. People don't like to realize that. People are like, "But I like free shipping." But guys, the the shipping just bake it into the price. If you have a hundred cards coming back and the shipping is twenty dollars, just divide it, and it's going to add very little to each individual card. Very little cost to each individual card. Now the time for that to ship back to you, and then for you to list it on eBay to get your images up and all that stuff. Yes, that's going to take some time. We've had some people that uh, will submit cards, and when the cards are shown that they're shipping back to them, they'll they'll use the PSA scans to list it on eBay. You're playing with a little bit of fire there, because if you can't ship it out right away, uh, you might get into trouble, or if there's a delay, or if it gets lost, or anything like that. This sort of negates that. So our first-to-market people are people that are trying to stunk dog. The first tense, cards come out, my god, I gotta get them off, get them graded, get them back, get them listed, get them sold before the price comes down. I don't know why people are buying PSA 10s, why people are buying graded cards, why people are buying in such a rush to buy. I, I guess it's like the instant gratification kind of thing. The, or I, I'm sure some people are afraid that the price is going to go up. Most of the time, when, when something first comes out, it is not going to increase in price. It's going to be at its highest. If you're buying a PSA 10, the first to market PSA 10 that exists of something, the odds of that going up in price after your purchase is slim to none. More people are sending that stuff in. It's going to happen. So the biggest thing here is I think people are kind of putting the blinders on to the fees involved. Yes, this is going to make it easier. Is it going to make more people do it? Are people going to send a bunch of garbage in? And uh, I mean, we've seen it with the PWCC vault with a lot of that stuff where people are sending in things and selling things or not selling things just immediately like and and they're just they're taking a bath on it now with the PWCC stuff. Uh, if I'm getting this correct. They just basically keep the item if it doesn't sell for that minimum $5 plus buyer premium. And my God, every single week, there's some stuff on there that is just, what are you doing? This is a, this is a 15 cent card. It reminds me of a certain mystery box company <laughs> that we won't get into today. But people are going to, hopefully people learn when they, when they do stuff like that, that it's a bad idea. Now, is this an outlet? You guys remember the pandemic. Can you imagine how many eBay... 
or how sorry how many PSA submissions we had they're all one company eventually here apparently uh <laughs> how many PSA submissions were not paid for we had the whole thing with the middlemen that didn't have the money to pay for the stuff we had the whole thing with people submitting and the, the, a lot of the cards that they were getting back at the uh, especially especially when the um when the price per, per graded card was much higher in order to kind of throttle the amount that was coming in because they couldn't handle it because everyone and their dog during the pandemic needed to grade their cards and they needed to grade them right away. A lot of that stuff was junk slab. So it wouldn't surprise me here if we have something coming out, we have something going on that maybe this is a way for, for PSA to get rid of all that, the, the junk slabs that are just never going to be paid for. They can set them up on there. They can auction them off. They can gradually trickle them out. I don't know if they're still sitting on those. I don't know if they got rid of them in some other way. I have no idea. We're just kind of speculating here on what's going on. Let's get into the golden stuff here. Uh, now, with golden, with PWCC, I can't imagine there's a world where PWCC, if they were given the option, at the time, uh, they got kicked off of eBay uh, for alleged shill bidding. Would they? Would they? Would they have preferred to go off on their own, or would they have preferred to stay on eBay? Now, eBay is going to have the most eyes. So, if you're a company and you can get your fees reduced up the butt, reduced out of the butt, down the butt, whatever it is, you're going to take. You're going to probably take that. There's going to be more. I mean the the platform. You don't have to. You don't have the overhead. You don't have the cost of running, operating a platform, a website. You can still have the website. You can still have the listings there that are advertised and linked directly to the eBay listing. But if the fees are down low enough, you don't have to develop your own software. You don't have to develop your own website. You don't have to make sure all of that back end is functioning as it should. And now with a vault that is not an eBay vault, but it's a PSA vault. I don't. I, the vaults are all over the place. A lot of this stuff. Maybe it was it, it was a lot of, hey, you're going to come out with something? I'm going to come up with something else. Same with like the grading company battles. Uh, I, I mean, it seems like it's all getting flushed up and gobbled up by eBay at this point in time. But let's get into the golden stuff. I can't imagine. There's a world. Now I could be wrong. I don't have the numbers. I don't know how many users are on golden. And for the high-end stuff, I don't think it really matters as much. If there's a high-end card and people want it, they're going to get onto whatever platform they need to buy it on. It could be it could be anything. If there's if there's a deal to be had there, people are going to be on there for the most part. But at the same time, the barrier to entry is not even close to the same. Now, if you have eBay with a jillion billion eyes, and you're going to have access to those people that are that are looking for that premium thing anyway. It doesn't really make any sense for me. Why Why does... It says eBay acquires Golden. But it sounds like... It's, they're making it sound like it was a purchase. I don't know if it was a purchase. I don't know if it would have to be a purchase. I think just if you gave a low enough fee to Golden or any other auction company, they would want to be on eBay. There's more eyes. Less work probably by them. Less overhead if they, I mean, if they have the infrastructure already in place, that kind of makes sense. Now, uh, we're going to take a look here. we got to get to 20, 2530, I think it is. You're going to want to check out the um, the Pokemon Knowledge Cards upload here of Ken Golden. This is back in the in the good old days in 1999. And, um, yes, I, I, again, in my opinion, this is, a, this is the snake oiliest thing of all time. We have Ken Golden selling Pokemon cards on QVC. Shop at home, 1999 Neo Premium File. So for anyone that isn't aware, the Neo Premium File is a widely available, very easy to grade, old Japanese cards, very, very good condition. Uh, and my God, the numbers that he makes up in this thing are just out of this world. This is like, this is, this is infomercial, like shop at home, as egregious as you can get with like just the, the I, I it's, Surely he doesn't think any of the things that he's saying here. I I hope at least. But let's let's take a quick listen in here. Again, remember, I think uh, PK Poke Knowledge actually purchased one of these and graded the cards. These cards are going to get a ten more often than not. You can go buy one of these, and they're mostly going to get tens from anything I've seen. Every thousand of these cards gets graded a gem mint ten. Okay, one out of a thousand, which right. is about the rate. Do you know what the odds are of putting together a complete gem mint 10? And I can't calculate it because my calculator does not go that high, but I want someone else, someone out there at Shop at Home Land right, to do it on their computer and let me know. This is 1,000 to the ninth power. 
which means the odds of somebody putting this together on their own, of ever getting it, is 1,000 times 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 1,000. I believe the odds, I may be misplacing one or two decimal points, but are probably in excess of 100 billion to one. That is remarkable. And again, that's how I can sit here and proudly tell you that you will never be able to buy this anywhere else. You will never be able to put this together on your own. You will never find this. All right, that's enough, that's enough of that. If you want to watch this, I suggest you do. It is the most ridiculous crap I have ever heard. I don't know what these actually sold for back then, but even at, at, at this time, $1,000 for a set of a, a PSA 10s. Like, this is, this is egregious. This is, this is some scummy, scummy stuff. Now we have the Golden website, which, I, okay, the Golden website is there. People are going on the Golden website. They are buying the sports memorabilia. They're buying what they want to buy when the stuff comes up for auction. Yes, I'm sure there's people there. There's people on PWCC, but you're, it's not even going to come close to the same eyeballs as you would on eBay. Now, that's why I'm just saying that I kind of doubt that there's like some kind of buyout, some kind of like purchase of Golden versus them just getting a really good deal. Maybe PSA, maybe Collectors is doing a little swap arena. Maybe they're doing a little exchange arena. Maybe they're um, maybe they're a little closer than they let on. I'm not saying that they're necessarily the same company, but it seems like they're uh, they might be they might be touching touching each other. You know, you know what I'm saying. Now we've had some other pretty egregious stuff by Golden uh, Ken Golden here. We have the um, the two million dollar Illustrator. Uh, sale private sale that was the certain number right next to the one that was going up for auction i don't think that happened until i see receipts of that actually happening um the actual transaction itself i'm going to call full bs on it i don't think it was a real transaction again we we don't get any proof there's no actual record of it you can't say who bought it you can't say when it was sold what it was sold what was going on i mean chances are it was the same person that was selling one uh shortly after on the actual uh <laughs> on the actual auction play uh, my God! So, like that—that's the thing too. It's just—it's just ridiculous. Here we have a, a little bit of a goofy thing that uh, that Ken Golden can't tell that uh, Charizard was fake. He was—he was sending a sending a message uh, to an individual on Twitter who posted a fake Charizard, pretending that they pulled it uh, and saying, "Hey, you should definitely email me. We should uh, get it graded with PSA, and we should sell it on my platform." Now. Ken, when when I talked to Ken about it, he said that it was he was just trying to be discreet and tell this person about uh, their fake Charizard in uh, in DMs. But I, I think he just wasn't paying attention, or he doesn't know what a fake Charizard looks like. Now, again, do we have this this what appears to me to be a very snake oily and the old infomercials uh, we have here where he's making offers, he's throwing big numbers around about, hey, Logan, will you totally sell your, your illustrator that we can't see the back of? Uh, because it was regraded 9999. We don't even know how many times, but several times before it got a 10. Back in the day before PSA had a huge upcharge on something like this. Uh, so single digit uh, grading fees. Yes, single digits, less than $10 per grade, uh, per grading submission. Crack it, resubmit it, and eventually it'll, some, someone's going to give it a 10. One of the PSA employees decided that bad boy was a 10. The, again, there's a, there's a line here between, like, if you want to do something for entertainment, but if you're also selling these items, it starts to get into grease town to the extreme. It gets real greasy real quick when you start selling fractional shares of something like this. When you start putting offers, whether they're legitimate or not, if if you decide, oh, let's uh, let's just uh, toss some some big number offers on on stuff like this, uh, on while we're we got a bunch of people watching us, it, it it gets it gets a little dicey. It gets a little it gets a little. People might even call it manipula manipulative, man. I got to stop recording these in the morning so that I can actually speak. So business wire here. So this is another weird thing we have in 2021. Golden was acquired by collectors. It's weird that it would even need to be acquired by collectors. 
maybe they saw that there was the ability to to soak up some of those fees. But you would think that if Golden was its own thing and it was running the way that it needed to, that there would be no reason for them to be acquired by the larger company unless they wanted the payout. But if Golden is still working there and he's not just like, oh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna retire and and you can have my my auction platform. Sure. Uh, I don't, I don't really get it. And then to acquire them and then all of a sudden, uh, hand them over to eBay. Maybe, maybe it's kind of like a trade. It's like, uh, we can get that extra volume on eBay. We can soak some fees, even if they're reduced fees. Uh, and then the biggest thing I think is like where we get into like faked things, fake numbers, fake entertainment kind of stuff. You, you have your like pawn stars, you have your fake stuff that is, is meant for entertainment. And that's fine. I think that's fine. But when you cross into, you have your golden auctions and your advertising items and you get into like, oh, look, we're going to have Chum Lee on here. He's going to be talking about values. He's going to be looking at a collection and, and stuff like that. I watched the first episode of this shit and it was so fake. But I think the I, I don't mind it being fake. Like if, it, if you got like an auction auction wars or something like that and it's fake and it's for entertainment and, you know, you're not actually selling anything that's you know mentioned or or anything like that. I think keep those things separate. I think we saw we saw that with CGC quite a bit, where they were they were kind of crossing into the like, hey, we're gonna make some content that is very auction wars, storage wars, kind of, kind of, kind of content. But then also, if you're selling and you're supposed to be like a, you want to be respected in the space, you want to be the person that authenticates this stuff, you need to not blur that line. And that's my opinion. I think it, it, it's it's just it's just kind of gross. Now, yesterday, if you didn't see the video, you're going to want to watch that video uh, because we talked about eBay and TCG player and where eBay was kind of they, they got caught being a little dishonest. We have Liz here who has uh, many articles about this stuff, been been keeping an eye on it. I saw she was in the comment section of the previous video. Um Cool to see her there and glad to uh, spread the word. You're going to want to keep an eye on this value added resource website. And yes, I, I don't think anyone, this is not like me saying, oh, you should boycott all of this stuff as a collector, uh, as a buyer, seller, whatever it is. I think all of these resources are extremely valuable. I mean, it would be very hard to uh, to avoid using these. Uh, regardless of your intent within the hobby itself. But I do think it's important that we have all the information, uh, whether it's something that looks bad on eBay, on TCG Player, on Golden, on whatever it is. I think everyone deserves to be able to access that information. I, don't, I, just, I just don't think we should like blindly trust and respect any of these platforms, no matter how big they are. Right? Right. Cool. All right, let's get into the article here by Liz. Who says big news in the collectibles world as eBay sells off their vault to PSA owned by collectors and acquires golden auctions from collectors. So weird little weird, weird little exchange here. Um, and it's clearly I don't think this was just like an overnight like, hey, hey, psst, collectors, you want you want to do a little you want to do a little trade? You want to do a little buy sell? Uh, it's probably something that was in the works for quite some time now. Now, be very careful. Whether it's the eBay guarantee, whether it's the vault, whether it's anyone's vault, any of that stuff, any of the stuff that seems like it's too good to be true, where it's like, oh, yeah, it's no fees and whatever, there's probably going to be fees eventually. And no, the fees might be baked into the buyer, seller, whatever. It doesn't matter where the fees are baked into. It still, it still impacts the same way. It's like free shipping. There's no such thing as free shipping. If, if the seller has to pay for shipping, they're going to bake the shipping into the, the price and call it free shipping. I know. Crazy concept, right? All right, so we have the little article here. eBay collectors enters into commercial agreement, signed deals for acquisition of Golden by eBay and acquisition of the eBay vault by PSA. Not a surprise. And this, like, the, the I think this kind of, I mean, PSA was already ahead of the other grading companies by a mile. It might not have seen that way in the, the pandemic when they had to shut things down and then all of the other companies had a chance to exist, had a chance to make a quick tendy. That's why you had XYZ grading out of everyone's grandma's garage. Uh, they, they pushed the old Cadillac out of there. They they ordered in some junk slab, <laughs> junk slabs from, from wherever, wherever in the world, China, I would imagine. Uh, and they started making their own labels. They printed special labels. They did all that kind of stuff. You, you notice that there's a lack of those other companies, a lack of a reason to send to those other companies. But 
when there's the ability to make, you know, $20, $20 a card, uh, and you can do it. And no matter what kind of reputation, what kind of thing you have behind your stuff, because everyone and their dog was obsessed. It was, we were flooded. We were flooded with newbies and not that no one, everyone is a newbie at some point in time, but we were flooded with newbies. We were flooded with the dumbest purchasing decisions that we have ever seen. Because there were so many people that were new that didn't know what was going on. Everything was going up. So everyone was under the impression like, hey, if I just grade my stuff with any company, I'm going to I'm gonna be a jillionaire. I'll be jillionaire status. <laughs> and yes, no, the, not anyone's fault. They, they got introduced into a time that was not sustainable, into a time that was an, uh, just, just an absolute chaos. I don't know what you want to call it. It would be very surprised to see anything like that ever again, at least to that extent. Um, fingers crossed. No COVID 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, what do we got here? Parent company PSA, the leading third-party authentication and grading provider in the collectibles industry today, announced they signed definitive agreements to enter into a series of transactions that include a commercial agreement, the sale of golden from collectors to eBay. So they do say the sale... Now, it could have been a sale for a dollar. I don't know if they actually state the actual, the purchase price anywhere or if they have to if they have to do that in any way. And the sale of eBay Vault from eBay to PSA. Or if it was part of a trade or if it was... I don't know. It's hard to say. There could be other reasons, too, that they have an actual dollar value on it because it, it might offset these. And maybe for accounting reasons, it makes sense. I'm not an accountant. Get an accountant. Uh, some kind of super special mega accountant would probably have to talk on this point. This partnership will also extend grading services to customers in the U.S. through a simple and streamlined process, building upon the existing confidence buyers and sellers have in PSA's grading expertise. Additionally, PSA will introduce a new service offering to allow, allow customers to list and sell trading cards on eBay at the time a card is graded, accelerating time to market and quality of listing. So, like, the quality of listing thing, I do get that. I don't know what, like, there's a lot of people that will... There will, they have scans, but they don't use the scans. They'll take their own pictures. Uh, I don't understand why you would do that. Maybe it's quicker. Maybe, But at the same time, if the scans exist already, if the card information exists already, maybe this will like fill out all the 25,000 sections on the eBay listing where it's like choose the Pokemon, choose the HP, choose the all of that crap. And maybe they'll have that all integrated as well. I don't know how much of that matters. I can't be asked to put in 99% of that, but... There you have it. Existing options for grading and sale will remain available. So keep in mind when any of these companies, these companies are companies, when they claim they're for the collectors, we're doing it for the collectors, we're doing it for, for the hobby, all this other shit, um, they're almost entirely, almost full of shit. They're, they're going to say that kind of stuff uh, because it's, it's good PR or whatever. Trust me, everything that they do is in the best interest of their their, their dollarinos, their bottom line is what they're concerned about. Not you. They don't give a shit about little Timmy who's going to grade his 25 cent comments. 25 cent? Reverse comment, maybe. Reverse comment. PSA has also agreed to acquire the eBay Vault while maintaining seamless access to Vault services for eBay's U.S. customers. So the eBay Vault, a lot of people were like, oh my God, it's so cheap. It's a, They're like totally free. It's, it's like it's super cheap there. I don't know if there was like... I know the exact details. I've never used it. This isn't something that I would want to use. Um, I think most people, unless you're flipping and dipping, most people want to actually have the stuff in hand, uh, even if they plan to sell it later on. There's probably outlier cases where people are just, I mean, people did purchase NFTs and did purchase, I guess you still get a picture of it. Uh, and I mean, depending on your living situation, if you're somewhere that is uh, sketchy to the max, uh, if you're concerned, if you don't have somewhere to lock this stuff up, maybe that's uh, that's a reason for it. Or the like really high dollar items, maybe you don't want to have all of it on hand. But be rest assured, there is going to be fees to have that stuff stored in a vault. And then maybe if you don't pay your vault fees, maybe there's a certain amount of time where they get to keep all your stuff. Uh, it. They they have to they have to justify it somehow. They have to have some sort of fees. Their storage their storage is going to take place. If they just accept anything and everything, um, it's going to add up quick. The slabby slabby wabbies in in mass on mass. Uh, they take up a lot of space. So yes, they're they're going to charge you for it. Uh, now with PWCC, uh, there is I I have used the PWCC vault. 
um, mostly just because if I win one item and it's not worth shipping it on its own, then it's good to throw it in the vault and then ship them together. That's the kind of benefit. I think there's other tax reasons uh, that people have done that, but they'll charge you if you want to take it out of the vault within a certain time frame. You got to pay three percent. So there'll be fees just similar to that. There might be listing fees. There might be, you know, maybe they add a three percent on there to your actual sales fees. You'll have to determine for yourself whether or not it's worth it for you to do that. Uh, maybe, maybe this works for somebody that's grading like a whole bunch of something and they just want their one PSA ten copy or they want their one nine copy, or they don't want to sell the nine copies because they'll take a bath on them if they sell them, that kind of thing. Um, if somebody's like wants an obscure card. And, but at the same time, like your cost per card to ship back to yourself is going to be increased if you're shipping less back to yourself. So I think this is just the, the easy super flip. We saw it before with like the CGC uh, straight to PWCC kind of thing. Uh Certain stuff, yeah, you could probably make some money on it. But again, if you're just if you don't have, it depends how much control you have over it too. There's a lot of ifs here because we don't know the exact what's going on, how it's going. There is the benefits that if they're shipping it out, that uh, on high dollar items, you're not going to have to worry about someone scamming you, claiming it was damaged, claiming it was lost, all that other stuff. Um, so a little bit less hassle going after the the eBay, the eBay. I guess, not guarantee, the eBay customer service end of things. Uh, if if something goes bad, uh, some of that can be a headache, as we've seen on the channel here recently. All right, there will be no immediate changes to the services provided for a period of time post-closing. So this might as well say there probably will be. I mean, there's, there's going to be changes to, to begin with if you're using the eBay vault and shifting stuff over. I would imagine it's all going to be in-house or at the you would think that they would have it at or nearby the PSA facility so that there's not a lot of like you're not like transferring it somewhere to somewhere anyway uh, or if you are then it's close enough that you're not paying to you know truck it across the country or something like that after the deal closes PSA will fold its exist its existing vault services along with eBay's vault program into a newly branded offering with further details coming including integrating selling and grading services Sweet. Rumors of the acquisition had been swirling through the hobby for weeks, but uh, the timing brings up some interesting questions with ex-collector's VP of market Mike Nett finally revealing last week that he has in fact been serving as the general manager for trading cards and sports memorabilia at eBay for the last six months. So this is where, like, I guess the government's going to have to keep an eye on this stuff because if there's, if there's some deals that aren't uh, exactly, or, you know, ethical there there might be some crackdown on that i mean we saw with the with the video yesterday with the article yesterday um that uh we had ebay basically who always claims that they're not competing with customers this is also kind of right in there this is kind of right in along that um what has a acquired tcg player and then was selling product cards and sealed product that they lied about the dates on on ebay so directly competing with customers to some extent. They seemed like they were tiptoeing into it. They said they were going to be transparent. They weren't transparent about it. It seems like they might not be transparent about this either. So that's the thing too. It's just like if you're going to swallow everything up, if you're hiding things, is there a reason you're hiding things? This might be another instance where they're hiding things. And again, this is... It's just, it's good to know. It's This is good to know. Whether or not you uh, you like these services, you use these services, I think it's good to know if anything sketchy is going on. Net updated his LinkedIn profile in the last 24 hours to show he departed collectors in September 2023 while also announcing his new role at eBay in a post on April 5th, 2024. All right, all right. That's the thing too, it's just like, it's weird that you didn't, you were, you were there, you were serving there, but you didn't want to, you didn't want to update your LinkedIn until afterwards. Is there, are you hiding? Were you hiding it? It's kind of a little bit weird. So excited to share that for the past six months, I've been serving as the general manager for trading cards and sports memorabilia at eBay. It's been an absolute blast diving deeper into the industry and leveraging my experience from Amazon and collectors. For me, this is a dream job. I get to talk cards all day eBay is committed to innovating for the hobby, and I'm thrilled to be at the forefront of this journey. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We'll take your word for it. And, but why? 
Why didn't you say that six months ago? Investors and the SEC might be wondering what insider knowledge Net may have brought to the table and what impact that may have had on any negotiations in this deal. So that's the thing too. They could have been, they could have sent them over there. They could have had permission to take them. They're like, okay, do you want to take? It's it, there's there's I'm sure there's a lot behind closed doors. But again, eBay says that they like to be transparent. They they like to tell us what's going on here. Uh, so they didn't again. Investors and the SEC might be wondering what insider knowledge Net may have brought. We already read that. The situation could be in some ways, could in some ways be reminiscent of when Scott Cutler, Cutler, who joined eBay in 2015 as president of their StubHub subsidiary, subsidiary before being promoted to VP eBay Americas in 2017, left in February 2019, only to suddenly take on the CEO job at Rival StockX a few months later taking a chunk of eBay's sneaker business with him in the process. So, it's hard to say. It's hard to say here. While StockX played it off at the time that they had poached Cutler from eBay, the reality appeared to be that then eBay CEO Devin Wenig allowed Cutler, it's got to be Cutler, right? Cutler to engage slash consult with StockX while still a company officer. I don't know. Are the, I don't know how. Is that against the rules? It's weird also that they're going to fake that he was poached. I don't. If you have nothing to hide, why? It seems it seems weird to be hiding things. In fact, both StockX founder Josh Luber and Acutler publicly gushed to media at the time about their long friendship since the site was launched in 2016 and that Acutler had been a trusted advisor since the beginning. Don't know. Weird. Scott and I met just two days after StockX went live, says Luber. His extraordinary background mirrors the unique business model we have built at StockX. He understood the power of stock market of things and quickly became a friend and trusted advisor. Over the three years that followed, as the business scaled rapidly, Greg Schwartz, StockX co-founder and COO, and I had the idea that Scott might one be one day be the perfect CEO to take us to the next level. Then the stars aligned. The growth continued. We added three world-class investors to our team, and Scott became available. Wait, did he be, he became available or he got poached? We weren't looking for a new CEO, but this was no this was a no-brainer. I have known the company and the management team since the beginning, and I have been impressed by its unique market model in e-commerce and dramatic growth. StockX is rev revolutionizing e-commerce, says Cutler. An unsuck eBay. The hell? Twitter.com. Unsuck eBay account? Put it, put it at the time. StockX claims about this situation were more than a little misleading. Hmm. We have, in June, at StockX, issued a misleading press release stating they poached CEO uh, Cutler Scott from eBay, implying he was still with eBay when they hired him. Yeah, what's going on there, guys? Huh? What's going on there? Little poachy? Little little non-poachy. The timing of hiring a net and this acquisition could get even more interesting as eBay's mergers and acquisitions, due diligence, risk, and disclosure practices are being looked at as part of a deferred prosecution agreement with the Department of Justice after being found criminally liable in connection to the 2019 cyberstalking of journalists Ina and David Steiner of e-commerce bites. My God, this is uh, this is a crazy, crazy network here. The deal hit eBay with a three million dollar fine and enhanced compliance monitoring requirements for three years, including a specific focus on M and A mergers and acquisitions. So, hmm, so we got some stuff going on in here. The scope of the compliance monitoring, coupled with a historic $59 million settlement with the DEA and ongoing litigation brought by the EPA, suggests the Department of Justice and other federal regulatory bodies may be concerned about a wide variety of business practices, opening eBay's entire operation up to additional scrutiny. These concerns may include apparent, and, and there's a lot of stuff going on right now, so... We'll see what happens with that. Those concerns may include apparent due diligence and disclosure failures in eBay's October 2022 acquisition of trading card marketplace TCG Player. 
That's what we covered yesterday, which led to the formation of the first U.S. labor union in eBay's history and the sudden departure of Chief Accounting Officer Brian Dorger last year. As well as broader questions about the significant strategy shift eBay has undergone with increasing in-house labor-centric authentication operations in the last few years. The ongoing legal issues and increasing scrutiny of M&A Due diligent practices were likely significant catalysts to Chief Legal Officer Mary O. Huber announcing her departure and TCG Union CWA applying pressure to bring eBay to the table to settle unfair labor practice claims. I'm not super familiar with those uh, laws or unions or or anything like that, so um, I suggest you look into those. If you do, uh, if you do want to know more, uh, maybe take somebody else's kind of, I'm, I'm not going to add too much to that, uh, just because I'm not super familiar. Selling off the eBay vault as part of this deal could simply be a business move to focus on what eBay is good at auctions while getting rid of part of the business where eBay has struggled to gain traction. Yeah, I mean, the vault the vault probably makes more sense to be on the, the grading company's end of things uh, and then have them sell through eBay. Um, as part of like the deal. So I don't know is the, the whole thing is a little bit weird because like how much other than not having competition, like if PSA already has a vault or could just make a vault, have a vault on their own, same thing with the other grading companies. Um, do they really benefit other than, you know, reduce competition with the vault space? If eBay doesn't have a vault and people aren't sending to that vault, they're sending to their vault instead. Same with like Golden is probably better off on eBay regardless. It doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like purchases necessarily needed to be made here. It seems like it could have just been a deal unless it's tax reasons or something like that. Some kind of or regulations that require an actual purchase to be made. Uh, or maybe it makes it less suspicious if it's a purchase of both of those. I'm not sure. I don't really know. We'll have to stay tuned. But it might, it may also be an effort to reduce scrutiny from regulators. Ooh, it could be that too, especially since eBay is already likely to be in the hot seat over revelations that they are competing directly with sellers on their own site under the TCG player name without disclosure. Very true. So that was the, the article that we read yesterday, that we took a look at yesterday, by also by Liz. Um, appreciate Liz putting the the work into uh, into these articles, into this stuff here. There she is at the bottom. A group of TCG player sellers also raised concerns early this year about eBay's acquisition of the company. And then we have the the union. So we have union issues. We have eBay selling on their own platform where they say that they don't, uh, and then lying about the date that they started doing so. Lying. I don't know if they're necessarily lying about the reasons, but it seems like they're lying about the reasons uh, about why they're listing like the they're the serialized cards on on eBay, trying to say that it's too hard to sell on TCG Player. We we saw that it wasn't. That's definitely not the case because you can they even have their own separate listing for the serialized cards. If there's a if there's a 500 serialized card, it just needs to be its own entry, and then in the description you can put you know it's one of 500, 79 of 500 whatever it might be right easy peasy so it seems like some bs coming out of this i mean you gotta expect it big companies are going to bs um but i think it's important that we call them or that we notice the bs that's coming from them uh i get it people like to, to latch on to certain companies if you're a psa fanboy if you're an ebay fanboy you're probably a fanboy you might not want to hear the the negative things that are coming out of this stuff but I think it's important whether or not you're going to use the platform. Uh, it, it's important to know this stuff, to see what's going on, uh, and uh, to take it all into consideration, um, especially the people that are kind of revolving their business model around this stuff. It's it's important to be to, to stay in tune with it uh, and to maybe have a backup plan. So if you're doing consignment services, I mean, right now, I don't think any of those consignment services have in like the information on what what's happening exactly, what changes are going to be made, how they're going to adjust their business, but they need to be ready for the for the worst, I guess, because you can go from all of a sudden your business doesn't make sense anymore, uh, and and you got to completely restructure, or maybe it's not feasible at all, and you you need to just close it down and and do something else. All right, that's all I got today. Hopefully, that was an interesting little rant. I know it's uh, it's. 
Uh, not the most exciting stuff. It's not any, we're not scamming. We don't have uh, G.I. Joe cases or anything here, but I think it's important information to those who want to learn, those who want to be want to be around this stuff for the long term, uh, knowing all of this stuff, having a general idea and opinion on it, um, and, and seeing where it goes. Um, being prepared for what happens is, is all very important. So thanks for tuning in. If you made it through the whole video, you're the best. Thanks again to Liz for putting these articles together. Um, and, uh, and hopefully everyone kind of sees all sides of everything. Don't, don't just, don't take one side of, of any story. Uh, make sure you get all angles, uh, the good, the bad, whatever it is, regardless of, and, of what you want to do with your money, where you want to spend your money. Um, I think it's good to, to know everything. Thanks for tuning in. Join the Discord. See you next time.